Well, a while back I made a video comparing the shooting of a conical bullet to a round ball. In this case I was using the Lee conical that weighs 200 grains and has a diameter of .450. And I had a comment where someone was interested in finding out how that bullet would actually fit underneath the loading lever for let's say like this Remington because I normally load in a um, out of the gun or off the gun I should say take the cylinder off and load in this press here and that's probably not the way most most shooters do so uh, we thought it'd be interesting to do a video here to see actually how this um, bullet fits underneath this or if it can be loaded um, by the gun itself in the in the loading lever and I also decided maybe I would do that with several other guns that that we have here that are also 44 caliber so you know with that said let's get to checking this out these bullets are coming out of out of bullet molds and uh, the first one here is um, uh, coming out of a mold made by Lee Manufacturing, or Lee Precision actually. And the second one's also manufactured um, by Lee, but it's sold by Ears Gone. And uh, they're selling this bullet. This is a uh, kind of a replica of a Civil War bullet. And it's called the 44 uh, Johnson and Dow. And like I say, this Ears Gone company is, is uh, having Lee produce that bullet for them. So these are the two conicals that we're going to. Uh, testing our guns and what we like to do here is get some um, basic measurements off those two bullets. So I'll check some measurements on these. On the Lee I'm getting across they're all called the base which I guess sometimes it's called the heel of the bullet. I'm getting 443 and 443 again and here on the Johnson I'm getting four you know 430 pretty close. I think their website says like 428 in here, 443. So close to 10, 10, 12 thousandths larger here on the base. Now that's still small enough to fit down inside the, the uh, chambers, but as soon as it bumps into this next ring here on the Lee, it's going to have to stop there because that's a 448, and a lot of times our chambers, uh, especially in the pit, are around 446. Uberides is a tad larger than that nose of this Lee would be close to 447 so pretty close to the same size as the as this um, uh, ring that's got um, it has on it so you know that's going to shave some some lead off from this ring on a 446 chamber and also some on this first section of the nose up here and on the Johnson bullet that nose section uh, I got a 448 on that. Kind of hard to do this on the camera too. 448. Yeah, right in there. The same with the with the Lee. So not a lot of difference there. This um, ring that we have around here, that's going to be larger, I believe, on this Johnson and Dow. That goes up to 463 by measuring it right here. 464. So we're definitely going to be shaving some lead and getting a you know good seal on that section. As far as bullet length goes, this uh, Johnson Dow is coming in at six point uh, six eighty six eighty seven roughly, and our Lee is quite a bit shorter, point five five five. So big difference in that area. So anyway, those are the dimensions off our our two bullets. And now. We'll start seeing what they can, uh, how they fit into the, into the guns. So first gun we're going to try it in here is the 1858 Remington or a copy of one. This one done by by Pieta. Now I'd like to be able to drop that bullet right in this this position here rather than have to kind of slide my, uh, turn my cylinder around and then wedge it in over here. So I'm going to try it in that position first, and it drops in there on this Lee bullet, uh, no problem. Well, let's see if we can rotate the rotate the cylinder, and then we're going to get to bump into the the nose here is bumping into the metal. Um, I can't see that right here if I pull this thing out again. Okay, let's get myself a pair of tweezers and something to actually grab those things out with because they're pretty slippery. Okay, we're back with plan plan B here. So we got some metal right in here that if you're going to want to load the the conical right in this one and then be able to turn the cylinder and have it swing underneath the um, loading lever here, you're going to have to do some removing of this metal here. And the way to get around that is by loading it in the, getting around that spot first 
and then kind of sliding it in, letting it drop into this, you know, this position here. And there it's in there. And I got plenty of room between the top of the bullet and where the loading lever is. So that'd just be a case of pushing that down and, and that would uh, it basically would work fine. We'll try our Johnson and, and Dow next. I imagine I'll have the same issue with, with that as far as turning goes. Well, that was kind of interesting. The nose position's a little different. Actually, uh, tilted a little bit, but it swung in there. Let's try that again. I'm putting it in this spot. And then we're going to rotate it. It moves just a little bit, and then it uh, turns its corner and, and makes that uh, makes that turn. And of course, it's it's got clearance, not a lot there. I'm saying maybe I don't know twenty thousands. Yeah, maybe twenty thousands of clearance there between the top top of the bullet and the uh, loading lever. So that would uh, would push right down. And we're not doing that, of course. Get that out of there. Something else you might want to take note on these guns. I'm not going to take my loading levers out on all these guns, but this one here is set up really nice for a round ball, but there's no, no concave spot in that uh, loading lever there. So that's going to push directly on the, on the uh, uh, top or the nose of this bullet, and probably, if it's going in there pretty hard, it's going to uh, put a little bit of a, a flat spot on the top of that bullet because it's not, it's not a concave or not a... Uh, a shape there on the loading lever that's that's uh, the same as the bullet is. I want to go back once more with the Lee bullet and see if I can force that around the corner like I did with the with the Johnson and Dow. So I'm going to set that in there again. And no, that does not want to does not want to make the corner. So. Well, next we've got another 1858 Remington or it's a replica of one, this one done by uh, Uberti, and we'll try the same same procedures with that as we did with our, our Pieta gun. So we're going to try to load it into the uh, front right there. Drops in almost a little slicker than that, but here look at this. The nose went down quite a bit further than it did on the Pieta, and I was saying that these are, I think, a four, um, four, four, six. And I'm thinking these are almost like a 448. That difference there is is uh, dropping it past the that second that band is actually going in there, and the nose being just a tad larger than that is actually stopping it. So maybe some some problems with this Lee, and as far as um, uh, getting a good seal on that goes, there's going to be a lot that's going to hold that in there. But certainly dropped in there nice. And let's try our our rotation with that. Yeah, no problem rotating it. Plenty of room underneath it, of course, because the bullet dropped down. So, um, like I say, that'll load in there. My concern might be that it's um, just a tad small. Maybe, maybe I could get these to cast at a four, uh, four five zero. Oh, I'm getting those around four, four eight, a couple thousands under what they're spec'd out to to cast at. All right, let's see what the Johnson and Dow does in that. Again, in our position that we'd like to see it in. Um, no problem there. Will it rotate? Yes, it does. And notice that one's not dropping down. It's getting caught by that larger ring that we've got. So I'd say that would be a, a winner as far as um, loading in that gun goes. Our loading lever, and what kind of a shape have we got for our loading lever? Let's get that out of there. I can bring that down a little bit. Again, I'm not seeing any, any concaveness in here. It's, uh, again, going to fit a round ball pretty well. But again, it's going to probably flatten the, the tip on that bullet some. Okay, third one we're going to try will be our uh, replica of an 1860, 1860 Army. This one done by Pieta. And let's try our Lee Conical on that one. It seems to be, when I'm trying to put it into the forward position here where I oh the other ones right like this. It's bumping into the the uh, barrel here just a tad, so it's not going to be easy to, to drop in there. So we're going to have to go to second position, right closer to the to the uh, where the frame is is cut away, and getting it in there. 
It's a little, I almost wonder if that uh, diameter of our, listen cat, yeah all right that did that did drop in there so that's that's going to work. Um, I'm going to be able to bring our loading lever down on that you know, no problem. Getting it back out again. And as far as the loading lever goes, that one again is pretty much set for a round ball. Of course your Lee here doesn't have much of a, doesn't have as sharp a point as the Johnson and Dow does so we're not going to notice the flattening quite as much on that one. Okay, trying the Johnson. Let's see what that one does. Again, I can't load that into the in the front like this, where it would be easiest. So we're going to have to tweak it around to the closer to the indentation here in the frame. And yeah, I was able to get that to work in there, and I've got some top clearance. This drops down quite a bit because that heel on there is is um, uh, fairly long, so. You know, no problem there. I mean, that's going to load, not the fastest, but looks to me like it's going to work in our um, 1860, 1860 pitter with uh, with the Johnson and Dow. All right, we'll switch these around. The fourth one that we've got is our again 1860 replica. This one by we'll try our, our Lee conical right out in the front. I'm just not quite able to get that to, to slide in, drop in there, at least not easily. So, so let's move it into the closer to the loading lever, putting it in there. Okay, these things are slippery. I'm having a real easy time with that either. There, probably just me. There, dropped in there. But um, this, you know, the base on this Lee is definitely larger than on the on the uh, Johnson and Dow, but still slides in there, and it does it does slip underneath. So, well, it's like it's a go. It um, doesn't have a lot of clearance between the section of the frame right here. That's kind of coming down in there, and that nose. The way it's set, uh, but it does. Well, actually, it's riding, riding right on it right now. But it will. It'll push down because the uh, shape here, the nose are getting, you know, getting smaller as it pushes down. So it'll push down with, with no issue. Would be my guess there. Well, let's get that out of there. Try our Johnson and Dow, and we're going to have. You know, I was able to actually drop that in. Up in the position that I like to see it in, rotate it around. It's coming underneath there. A little contact with the frame section there and the nose, but it's gonna it's gonna drop in, push down. As far as the loading lever goes, well, that's actually got a conical shape to it in there. I mean, I can't see that on camera, but that's gonna fit pretty well on that on that nose. So that's different than the other ones. That um, and this one might give us a little grief on a round ball. It might be a little bit of a indentation on the or on the edges of this thing but it's made for looks like it's made for a conical on there that's interesting okay so that's our 1860 uh, done by Uberti all right the next 1860 up is one that's done by Army or should a replica of one done by Army San Marco and let's check it out again with the Lee Definitely not going in that position, so we're going to have to get this closer to the to the uh, loading lever. Uh, I'm running into an issue here. We can't see that with the metal right in this in this section here. It's not wanting to. I'm also going to call that a no. I mean, you got to futz around with that much, and it doesn't drop in. Well, there I got a slide across. I right, must try that. Instead of starting it in at an angle, we're going to set it across this thing and slide it in that way, and then rotate the cylinder down in there. I'm thinking, you know, it's possible these chambers are just a tad smaller on this on this Army San Marco. 
I'm not getting it to fit real well. I mean, yeah, I think it would work, maybe, but um, let's just say it's not an easy, not an easy drop in. And this one has that's a kind of shape for a conical in there, not as much as the as the Uberity was, but I'd say this one is kind of built as far as inside the loading lever here goes uh, for a conical. So, so the Lee is a question mark on that to me. Let's go with our, our Johnson and Dow. We're going to have to do the slide. And that baby is just too, I think it's too, too tall. Yeah, I'm not getting there. I'm not, not coming in there because our our band that's a little larger than on the Lee is actually catching on that metal there. So I think that's a no-go on this gun. So there would be the Dremel job on this one, I think. To take off some metal if you want to get that to function with the conicals. So here's our fourth, or last 1860 that I'll be checking right here. That's um, couldn't really call this a repl replica gun because it's actually made by by Colt. It's one of their second generation guns that they manufactured. This one has the fluted cylinder. Let's try our our Lee on that one. Okay, it's not going in in that position, but if I rotate the cylinder just a tad and and put it in here, I think it'll yeah. Drops right in there, rotates underneath there fine. Well, that's interesting, it just dropped down and it's going quite a ways down there. So, how long it's going to take me to get that out, I do not know. I'll take our barrel off, but I think if I wrap it a little bit. But anyway, that's going down in, so that is uh, a little worse than the other gun that I had as far as how far it drops in easily. It's telling me that those chambers are a little larger here in the, in the cold. All right, let's get that out of there. So, going with the Johnson and Dow, um, trying it right in the front section. It tends to kind of go in there a little easier, and if I rotate it, it's right where it belongs. And that one is not dropping down because of that larger ring that's out here. So, that would push, you know, push down with our loading lever. And that loading lever looks like it's recessed. I mean, it's got the uh, concave shape. Yeah, it does for the conical bullet. So that's going to be a pretty, pretty slick deal. So let's try that once more. Slide that in there, rotate it around, and I'm just have to push it down, which I'm not going to do. But that's what it will look like. That brings us to our our last 44 uh, caliber gun that I've got here, and this one is done by Pieta. And can't really call this a replica. I mean, it is a replica, but it's got a 51, 1851 frame style on it. Um, octagonal barrel kind of a thing. A nice, very nice looking gun. The brass frame has got some engraving on it. And it's been uh, chambered in 44 caliber. And that actually is, of course, as most, most know, is not a uh, original chambering for the, for the gun. And with the uh, 51 frame, we've got a very short... Um, recess here in the in the frame for that conical to go underneath so I think we're not going to get much chance at all of loading this gun with the conical bullets without um, taking the cylinder out of it and loading the cylinder separately and I think we can just take a look and see how that would work or why our problems might what problems might happen with that okay there I've got that setting in there and that sets in fine because <clears throat> Our um, chambers here are large enough to accommodate that uh, base. And all that, we're not not a lot off. We got enough. We've got enough clearance on the height, but we're hitting it just a little bit of the edge. If I pull that out, I'm kind of show where that is. Maybe right in here. I think it wouldn't take too much with our Dremel tool and the, and the right grinder and a little patience there to take that off. And I think that would just, that Lee Conical would go in there. At least that's my opinion. Now you got to get the 
the base to work down first. I should have these guns up like this, but the camera isn't working too well. That makes it a little easier. Gravity's on our side. <clears throat> it's a little bit of fussing with the cylinder here, and that drops. But it, you know, I could possibly even, um, by turning the cylinder here, get that to go down in because it isn't doing. I I don't have a a big amount of of um, metal to take off of that frame. But if I rotate that, force it right now, I think I'm gonna end up forcing my bullet down into the chamber, which you know, which is where it belongs. But I'll have a heck of a time getting it back out again. So. So that's something that if you own one of these guns, you'll have to play with a little bit and decide. Like I said, I'd like to force that down. Try to I can put some pressure on it. It's not wanting to move. It wouldn't take much metal to be removed here, and I think she'd go around. I think the real question would be is do you really want to shoot conicals in a in a brass frame like this? And of course they make this also in a solid steel frame, so that'd be a little different issue. But I'm not sure I'd want to put put the full charge in here of uh, 30, 35 grains, whatever it is, of, of uh, 3F and do a lot of shooting with, uh, with heavier conicals with that brass frame, but that's just, just my way of thinking. Alright, let's try the Johnson and Dow and I think our cat has knocked that off somewhere. Take me a second to dig that up. Nope, he didn't. I blame him for nothing. Also, oh, here's where that one is and let's just try that. What drops down in there, but that nose is too definitely too um, too tall. I have to take quite a bit of metal out to get that Johnson and Dow to you know to fit in there. I, how much I can tell? It almost looks like it's maybe <clears throat> a good eighth of an inch um, from going in. So I think that would to me that would be a, a no because you're going to start. I'm not saying you know, you'll we, we want to do it, but it's. It's not like the first Lee bullet at all. You're going to, have to take a lot more metal off from the off from this section of the of the frame to get that to, you know to fit in. So anyway, that's kind of the way that one worked or didn't work with the, with the Johnson and Dow at least. Okay, so finishing up here, we tried our two conicals, the uh, Johnson and Dow, and the, also the Lee conical. In these, uh, I think it's uh, what six or seven. Um, replica guns and they basically uh, fit in most of them but there's a couple of couple of exceptions so anyway if you have a, a gun similar to one of these and you're interested in ordering out a bullet mold maybe this information uh, will be helpful and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video